So um, I got on to Michael Stokes because these fundamentals are critical to the whole operation of our society as a whole. These are not minor transgressions, these are important. And if you like, it's like the termites gradually eating away the foundations of your house. And everything's okay, everything's okay, and then the house suddenly falls down. Unfortunately, with the legal system, if the legal system is corrupted, you can't just reverse it in a couple of weeks. You have a lot of problems for a long period of time. So basically, given the amount of money that um, uh, Rod has picked up, that uh, the Amanda Valley Council may be costing ordinary Tasmanians through the PAL Act at 100 million, if you say, well, if that's replicated in, say, 10 other councils, a total of 10 councils, that's going to give us a, a number of something like a billion dollars that rural Tasmanians are going to lose like that. Um, that's not particularly funny, and basically um, it's a serious problem. So I'm enlisting Mike Stokes, and he's agreed to help. And uh, we're going to start working out exactly what to do about this particular situation. I've also spoken to him at some length about the PAL system. And there's a whole range of things that we can do. But basically, we've got to get our act together. We've got to go and learn some things. Then we've got to do them. But uh, that's all in train. It's all happening. Um, on a sort of semi-unrelated note, uh, one of the members who was here at the last meeting uh, has checked with the Electoral Commission and apparently the Electoral Commission told her that it's okay to write no mill somewhere in your voting paper as long as it doesn't obscure what you're doing and uh, basically she's suggesting that somebody actually organise a campaign to do exactly that. Um, whether the Electoral Office or anyone will care, I don't know, but it's not a bad idea. It probably needs another check with the Electoral Commission. Yes. I think it's my concern. I think my concern with that would be the nature of scrutiny is we may be looking at that and might not necessarily be able to agree with that. So if you do it as a campaign, you can talk to the electoral yes. office and make sure the scrutiny is the same as structure. And then they give direction. Yeah. Uh, not necessarily the scrutiny is for those against the no, I'm just saying that's, a, that's the theory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of theory. Uh, one of the theories is that the political system is somehow acting in our interest, for example. So we can't rely on those theories. We can't rely on those theories. And then um, John Izzard, who you probably all know, he's been along here a few times. Uh, he's progressing well with the DVD that shows the threat to our food industry from plantation to state. So basically the trouble is the plantation estate is gradually creeping over our food producing areas and we're also losing a lot of jobs and a lot of money as those things disappear. Now the last thing we're going to try and do, I'm working with Bob now, we're going to try to put together a presentation to describe all of this to those who wish to come. And uh, we believe that the issues are sufficiently significant and important that people at least need to hear for themselves what those issues might be so they can decide if they want to do anything or just sit back and relax or do whatever it is they want to do. So we'll be also trying to do that. John, did you want to say something? I uh, absolutely applaud what you're doing, but another major, major <laughs> consequence of all this is our media, newspapers, magazines, television will not report on this issue. That's, yes. That's correct. So the wider Tasmanian population yes. either don't know or will never know about it. That's correct. The media is, is reporting. The media is deeply compromised. We've got a duopoly. Um, we have some ways around some of these things, but again, I can't share those with you because of the loggers in the room. But basically, um, we, believe that, <laughs> we believe there are ways forward. None of it's as good as actually having the media doing what it should be doing. Billion dollars lost to rural Tasmanians, you know. Politicians betray own electorate, that kind of thing. We're not seeing that in the headlines, and we're not going to see that for a while, but we can do that. So there's quite a number of things we can do. So basically, um, we're taking that on. Uh, think about um, coming along to this larger presentation, inviting other people. Are there any questions? Yeah, can I ask one? You just mentioned that uh, when the judgment was made about the Meander Council and what was going on there, and about the power, that the judge was possibly had investment in the timber industry. Have we got any proof of this? Because uh, okay. and how, how concrete is that information? I, I understand. I'm, I'm only giving this as hearsay, Peter. Yeah. But as I understand, it wasn't on PAL, it was on the cast logging. And as I understand it, the judge at the recent appeal admitted that this person had a pecuniary interest and would and would make money from it and then dismissed that well, as a... Kelly, of course. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. Then he dismissed it as... So it was not a problem. <laughs> so... <laughs> Kelly, yeah. So basically, um, some very serious issues. Anything else? Is it possible uh, to ask the judges and politicians if they have...
have invested in these managed investment schemes to cut back their tax. Because really, probably all those politicians federally are perhaps in, the, in gun schemes. Yeah, there's several and serious is problems. Is there some way of, of we can forcing ask them. them out, forcing them to... We can ask them, but at the moment we don't know how to make them answer. The purpose of getting together with these legal people is to try to work out what to do about these fundamentals. We've got um, the, the principles of natural justice. There's two here. Um, the right to a fair hearing and the rule against bias. Now, both of those have been aside, set aside by Philip Ruddock in the matter of David Hicks, so, or in the matter of Hanif. So basically our governments are saying, yeah, we're interested in the rule of law, and then dumping it um, in actual fact. So they're very serious issues. Now the easiest way to get rid of Ruddock is to vote him out of office, but these problems still will still be there. So um, there is a similar problem when it comes to disclosure of an interest. So. Uh, we can't force disclosure of an interest from a lot of these people. We actually asked the Launceston Council, do you have shares in guns? And they all said, they go, well, we haven't got to answer this, and no, and all the rest of it. Um, they may indeed not have shares in guns. Perhaps their wife has a share in guns, or their trust has shares in guns. So um, the public service, their superannuation fund, they have shares in guns. So the public service has every interest in not causing guns heavy losses because it affects their superannuation income. But we can ask um, guns for a complete list of their shareholdings. You can. Yes. But whether they'll give it to you is another thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I gathered from the question there was um, which politicians um, believe in MIS and all that sort of thing. Um, apparently Costello doesn't like MIS, but Howard said do it. Yeah, that may be so, yeah, so. Um, but it doesn't help us. No, but it does know who they Just are. Yeah, it sounds long since the City Council, I've got a bit of a broken voice, that's fair with me. I don't have any shares in guns, by the way. And Frank Knott's also here from the and City I have no shares in guns. <laughs> <laughs> and I admit it, that's fair with me.